You know, I, I went from being on the cover of magazines with the headline, Scott Stapp is this summer's rock and roll savior, to the worst band of all time. When I saw Kurt Cobain for the first time, and I could, I just felt, I, I felt like I knew what he was singing about. One band often accused of copying Nirvana's sound and style is Puddle of Mud. Interestingly, they formed in 1991, the same year Nirvana's Nevermind was released. Despite their early start, it wasn't until 1999 that Puddle of Mud was discovered. Wes Scantlin, the band's lead singer, was on his way to New Orleans to start a new life as a bartender when he received life-changing news. Fred Durst, the frontman of Limp Bizkit, was interested in signing him to his label Flawless Records. Fred Durst gave Wes a tough choice. Sign with Flawless Records and leave his band, or not sign and lose his chance. Wes saw it as a one-way ticket and took it. This decision ruined his reputation in Kansas City, where people saw him as the guy who betrayed his bandmates. A deal was struck, and Scantlin was sent to Los Angeles. There, he joined new bandmates in a revamped puddle of mud to record their debut album, Come Clean. Released in 2001, it produced hits like Control, Blurry, and She Hates Me. And that's when they hit the big time. People couldn't help but notice how hard they tried to look and sound like Kurt Cobain. Their frontman had that same stringy blonde hair and a style that blended Kurt's grunge with a bit of rap rock and skater vibes. What sort of music do you like to listen to? Who are some of your favorite performers or bands that you really enjoy? You know, I love Fleetwood Mac. I love uh, I love Prince. Um, and uh, you know, Nirvana. And, you know, Chains. And, you know, I mean, like the Pilots. You know, shoot, he's gone too. But the heavy inspiration didn't stop there. In 2020, Puddle of Mud did a Sirius XM performance where they covered About a Girl and a bunch of other songs. It went viral, but not in a good way. People everywhere criticized Scantlin for trying too hard to sound like Kurt Cobain, but instead, he just ended up yelling. But this wasn't his first Nirvana about a girl cover. He first did it in 2005, and to be honest, he sounded much better back then. But in his defense, he later explained to Song Facts in a recent interview saying, I was acclimating and it was a tiring day, and I had already performed five or six songs at one time, and by the time I got to that one, which I shouldn't even have done because I cannot nail that song, I was a little tired. It looked and sounded like total but live to fight another day, dude. Next up is Oleander, an alternative pop band from Sacramento. They had a brief moment of fame in 1999 with their debut album, February Sun. As for their biggest hit from that album, Why I Am Here, features a riff that sounds almost directly taken from Heart Shaped Box. You can easily notice that they heavily borrowed from Nirvana, even in the album cover. Also, you might recognize this song Down When I'm Loaded intro, because it's actually from All Apologies. Bush is an English grunge band that often got labeled as copycats, especially early in their career. However, they always denied these claims. Rossdale remembered seeing Nirvana in 1991, when he first moved to America, and being deeply moved by the concert. He was having an eight-month affair with Courtney Love, and she had a vision of marrying him one time. 
He also had chronic stomach pain like Kurt Cobain, and they shared similar influences. Bush even worked with Nirvana's producer Steve Albini on their second album, Razorblade Suitcase. Working with him was a dream because I'd grown up on, well, the Pixies, Bone, Bone Machine, Surfer Rosa was a record that literally, like this, never mind the bollocks was a big record. So those were big records to me. And it was a very crazy move. We were very compared to Nirvana and it was a bit commercial suicide. Was it the right thing to go and work with a person that had done the record with it? And I just thought that if anyone could pick up the band, what we'd accrued uh, being, being on the road for three years, it would be him. Despite Bush's success, critics were not fans. The band was often compared to Seattle bands, especially Nirvana. In 1996, Rolling Stone even wrote an article about Bush titled Nirvana Wannabes. Bush tried to ignore the comparisons, but the similarities were hard to miss. Even Nirvana's drummer Dave Grohl noticed the similarities leading to a brief feud between them. Pantera's frontman, Phil Anselmo, even agreed during a chat with Alternative Press. He said, Listen to the music a band like Bush wrote. When I accidentally heard one of their songs, I wanted to sue them on behalf of Nirvana. In more recent years, Gavin became more forthcoming on the influence of Kurt. He told American songwriter, I thought there was immense brilliance by that band, and who made rock records that weren't influenced by them in some way, in some capacity? Let's talk about Creed, a great example of how the post-grunge scene went commercial, thanks to Nirvana opening the door. Despite becoming a bit of a pop culture joke, like Nickelback, Creed was very successful. They had a unique appeal as an explicitly Christian band, which attracted fans who might not usually listen to secular music. This helped them gain popularity, especially with listeners who connected with their Christian-themed songs. When I was younger, I felt called to be a pastor. I preached my first sermon, all right, in front of probably a thousand people in a youth group. That was always in me, and so I, I went to the complete polar opposite of what a preacher is, but still in my writings could not escape what I knew was right, and that is to point people uh, to God. You might have noticed their frontman Scott Stapp voice sounds a bit like Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. Well, look, yeah, it's Scott Stapp. That kid looks like my lost or sound. Here it is, cause I will beat your trick three fast in the but his emotional lyrics and delivery are straight out of the Nirvana playbook. It's because of his own personal struggles with addiction and depression. In an article by the Daily Beast, Scott Stapp shared a wild story. One night, after drinking a whole bottle of whiskey, Stapp grabbed guns from his collection. He believed that anyone connected to his band wanted him dead, thinking it would turn him into a Kurt Cobain martyr type to boost record sales. Next, let's talk about Stained, an American rock band known for their emotionally intense and angst-filled music. They started in the early 90s with Aaron Lewis, Mike Mushok, and John Wysocki. While many bands tried to mimic Nirvana's heavy, intense style, Stained focused on Nirvana's quieter, slower songs. They even covered Nirvana's All Apologies and Something in the Way. Stain's lyrics are drawn from Aaron Lewis's troubled childhood and feelings of isolation just like Kurt. Their big break came when they opened for Limp Bizkit, catching the attention of Fred Durst, who signed them to Flip Records. Their album Dysfunction sold over a million copies, leading to widespread success with their third album, Break the Cycle, which debuted at number one. Their most famous song, It's Been a While, has a sad tone similar to these Nirvana tracks, the music video shows the band playing surrounded by candles, 
which reminds us of Nirvana's famous MTV Unplugged performance. That whole time frame kind of brought in the vocal style that allowed me the opportunity to do what I do. You know, when when Nevermind happened and when Pearl Jam 10 happened and Stone Temple Pilots core and it switched the vocals up from you know the how high can you sing the how high can you sing in your falsetto time of the 80s to the new wave of bands were singing down in their real voice Add Lana Del Rey's music and style to the long list influenced by Nirvana, as they had a huge impact on her. Kurt was Lana's main musical inspiration. In interviews, Lana said she looked up to him and admired his strong, fearless attitude towards life and music. Seeing him sing Heart Shaped Box on MTV was a big moment for her. She thought he was the most beautiful person she had ever seen. Even at a young age, she really related to his sadness. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about that time when you were 11 and you heard this song, Heart Shaped Box. What was it about Kurt Cobain wow. that, that transfixed you? Wow, I, I didn't know you knew that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm drawn to Kurt for all of the same reasons that I think everyone else is. I, you know, we didn't have TV when I was young, so we were at my mom's friend's birthday party. She had MTV going in her bedroom and um, I'd never seen a music video and I, I walked in and Heart Shaped Box was playing and I think the thing I knew about, the thing I realized about Kurt right away was that um, I felt like he wasn't even really acting, like him being crazy on screen was real, his pain was real and his excitement was real and I just felt like I didn't know anybody who was like that and I wanted to like know him. Back in 2012, Lana Del Rey did a cover of Nirvana's song Heart Shaped Box. She did it to pay respect to Kurt Cobain and his music. But Courtney Love, Kurt's wife, wasn't too happy about it. She's really protective of Kurt's work. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. See you in the next video.